In today's video, we are going to work on isolated knee extension with ankle dorsiflexion. In other words, how to straighten the leg and lift the foot at the same time. In this video, you're going to learn why this movement is so, so, so important, why a lot of times you can't do it after a neurologic injury, and of course, exercises to help restore this critical movement to improve your overall walking balance and walking confidence. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara, I'm a neurologic physical therapist, and on this channel, we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, and mindset in the context of neurologic injury with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your rehab and your health to live an overall more active, more mobile, pain-free, happier, healthier life. And all that said, let's first just talk about why this movement knee extension with ankle dorsiflexion or lifting the foot is so important. I'll briefly interrupt this video to talk to you guys about a product or a company that I have been using for years and years and that is Camelback. So when the opportunity presented itself for me to share their products with you, I was more than happy to do it. And just to prove that it is a product I've been using for years and years, I brought some of uh, the products I've been using just to show you how worn they are because I use them so, so often. The products that I've used most frequently are the Camelback, which is a hydration product where you just fill it with water, comes with a straw. Now, I use this for hiking and for long bike rides, but I've also seen this used where people hook them on the back of their wheelchair. Those of you that don't have access to or can't get to water or get water on your own. It allows you to keep water with you at all times. So I think that's a great use of the camel back. Uh, and then the other product I've been using for years and years are their, like what I call like their biking water bottles. What I love about these water bottles is the top on them. They're always open. So I don't know any of you that have used bike water bottles before, but you kind of have to pop them open. And when they're open, they leak. Well, this kind of just stays open all the time. And yet when you hit bumps and stuff, it doesn't leak. So just to show you that it does not leak, we're going to dump some water in here. And again, the lid is always open, so it's actually open right now, but it does not leak, but you can tell it's open. So always stays open. Absolutely love it. I'm a little bit embarrassed that I'm showing this one, but it was the cleanest one I have. They do get dirty quite easily, but absolutely love, love, love this. The product that I found more recently is their coffee mug. What I love about their coffee mug is it does not leak. So you can actually shake things up in it, which is what I use it for, for my electrolyte drinks. I'll show you like how really leak proof it is. So you can dump fluid in it. And then when it is in the closed position, it does not leak. So those of you that have any powders or anything that you like to use your water bottles to shake it up, I like this because of the fact that it also serves as a, like kind of has the lid like a coffee mug. So you push it, push it, that opens the lid, and then you just slide it, that keeps it open. Oops. You slide it, that keeps it open. And then you can free flow water, slide it back the other way, and it doesn't leak. So love it, love it, love it. But anyway, if you're looking for a Christmas present for someone, this is a great Christmas present. By clicking on the link in the description, it does support this channel. So if you like this channel and you like the content we put out and you want to get someone a really awesome Christmas gift, click on the link in the description below. And now back to the video. It's down to a critical component in the walking cycle that is many times disrupted or becomes abnormal or dysfunctional after a neurologic injury. And that is going from loading the leg to moving your body forward over the top of the foot. So as you can see, as I move my body forward over the foot, look at my ankle. My ankle is dorsiflexing, but at the same time, we have to be able to support our body weight. So the knee also needs to be able to straighten out. Now, why is this 
oftentimes impaired after a neurologic injury? Well, a couple of reasons. One reason is that you might have developed something what we call like abnormal movement synergies. So an abnormal movement synergy pattern is when muscles link up abnormally together. This is quite common after damage to the brain or the spinal cord. One theory is that this is a primitive movement. So in this case, it would be the knee muscles that straighten the knee out, link up with the muscles that point the foot down. We call that an extensor synergy pattern. If it is based on this theory of like kind of a primitive movement pattern, think about infants, they're either all extension or all flexion. That's because those movements are kind of hardwired into us from the day we arrive on this earth. Some believe that after a neurologic injury or damage to your brain, that one of the stages of recovery is that you go kind of back through that stage of moving in patterns. So in this case, when you are trying to load that leg or straighten that knee out, the foot's also going to point, which for a lot of you is why you have that sensation that you're falling backwards. And if your point, foot points really hard, it's why some of you hyperextend your knee, right? So if we try and straighten the knee, but the foot also points, it's gonna throw that knee a little bit further backwards. So if you have any of those two kind of movement or walking problems, then it might come back to this issue of having an abnormal synergy pattern. The other reason why this part of the walking cycle sometimes gets disrupted is something we call spasticity. Spasticity is an involuntary contraction that is a sign that you've had damage to your brain or your spinal cord. In other words, spasticity only occurs in someone if they have damage to what we call an upper motor neuron. An upper motor neuron is the neurons or the nerves in the brain and the spinal cord. A common muscle that a lot of people develop this in are the muscles that point the foot. Some things that can trigger a spasm, or one thing, is a quick stretch. Meaning if you rapidly lengthen a muscle, it will kind of recoil or react and it'll contract harder. So why does this happen when you are walking? When you go to load that leg, if your foot's a little bit pointed and then you put your weight on it, you're going to quickly lengthen that gastroc because your body weight is going to try and put your heel down onto the ground. And when that happens, it rapidly lengthens the <clears throat> gastroc. Then the gastroc or the muscles that point the foot kind of respond by recoiling or contracting again. So when you go to load that leg and you're trying to bring your body weight forward because that's normal walking, that foot points and pushes you backwards. All right, so if you are experiencing some discomfort when you walk or some lack of confidence when you walk or you get that sensation that you're falling, it might come back to one of these two things that I just talked about. But back to the topic of today's video, we are gonna learn, relearn how to isolate knee extension without that foot pointing, regardless of whether it's spasticity in the calf or an extensor synergy pattern, regardless, to isolate knee extension will improve your walking. It may not eliminate the spasticity or the abnormal synergy pattern, but it'll get you closer to normalizing your walking pattern. All right, so that's a little background to why I have selected the exercises that we're gonna do today. But before we jump into the exercises, there is a PDF handout that goes along with this video. The PDF handout has pictures and descriptions of all the exercises that we're gonna go through today so that you don't have to keep coming back to this video. You can just take that PDF to your little rehab area in your home and start those exercises right away without needing to fumble with your phone. The PDF handouts are available for our gold and our bronze members. If you wanna learn more about our membership programs, you can visit rehab-hq.com. That is also where you can sign up and get instant access to the PDF handouts. But I know there's a lot of you that cannot afford to be a member. And in that case, I have included a free PDF handout. It's the second link in the description. It is a list of exercises that I think are kind of the foundation to restoring normal movement when you're walking, working on single leg standing balance. If you wanna get access to that free PDF handout, again, that's the second link in the video description below. But now enough about all that, let's go ahead and dive into the exercise. 
All right, for this first exercise, this is really, really important. What we're doing is we are just blocking the ankle in dorsiflexion. So the working leg is the back leg. As you can see, the foot is flexed. A lot of times when you overly dorsiflex, meaning bringing the foot closer to the shin bone, decreasing that angle between the shin bone and your foot, when you overly dorsiflex the ankle, that a lot of times will just decrease that spasticity altogether. So that involuntary pointing, it eliminates it because the muscle is not at what we call like a good length tension relationship. So you have overly elongated that gastroc muscle because your ankle is so flexed. So this muscle back here, it's kind of like at its end range. And many times that helps if you are someone that has that spasticity. The other thing it does is it breaks up that synergy pattern. So because your body weight is kind of forcing that ankle to stay flexed, you can work on straightening that knee out, really minimizing the opportunity or the potential for that foot to point. So you're just gonna stand in that lunge position, start with that knee a little bit bent, and then straighten it out. If you are someone where your knee hyperextends, means it overly extends, your knee actually goes backwards, uh, try and avoid that. So don't go to end range if you are someone in that category. Just straighten your knee out until it's almost straight, maybe with just a little like a five degree bend in it. All right, so for this exercise, same thing. We're working on straightening that knee out, but we're also bringing our body weight forward. So different from the previous exercise, the previous exercise we were starting with the foot in a dorsiflex position and using our body weight to keep it in that position. For this one, we're actively trying to dorsiflex the ankle because we're bringing our body weight forward. So you can see when my foot's back here, my weight's back here, my foot's pointed, when my weight is here, my foot is flexed. So now we're gonna combine that straightening the knee out with dorsiflexing the ankle. So instead of that foot pointing with knee extension or straightening the knee out, we're trying to work the opposite. So trying to bring your body weight off of the wall is what flexes that ankle. Again, trying to decrease that angle between the foot and the shin bone. Now, you will see my other foot up on a block. That's what I do to what I call bias the working leg to make sure that you're put, not putting a whole lot of weight on the other leg and you're really loading the involved leg. So again, little bend, forward, sit that butt back and bring it forward, sit it back and bring it forward. All right, for this exercise, it's a little bit more of a challenging variation of kind of like the first exercise I showed. So that first one, we were using that lunge position to kind of use our body weight to keep the ankle flexed. Again, for this one, we're again using our body weight to kind of keep that ankle flexed. So the starting position for this one is you really want your body over kind of the shoelaces of your shoe. And then the additional challenge for this one is having to get your bottom up. So straightening those knees out from a very low position. You can start higher up, but the reason I like a low squat is it really flexes that ankle a lot. So if you start in a higher chair, you can see that decreases that amount of flex. That it, you know, we want that angle very small between the foot and the shin bone. Again, that a lot of times will take the calf muscle completely out of the picture because it's not at like a, what we, again, what we call a length, a good length tension relationship, meaning it's overly lengthened right now. And so it kind of loses some of its power. So again, starting in a low squat position, some of you don't assume you can't do this until you try it. I'm showing the harder variation where I'm putting my hands on something way out in front of me. So you want to get your chest over on this side of your toes. You don't want your chest back here because then it's going to be very hard to get up. So we're trying to kind of get, if this is the fulcrum, we want to get as much of our body weight onto the other side of that fulcrum or that teeter-totter as possible to allow us to get the bottom up. 
Now, one way you can achieve that is put something sturdy in front of you that you can pull up on. You can even use a door frame to do that. And then again, you just wanna get your body weight forward and we're gonna try and straighten the knees out, keeping that weight forward so that those heels stay flexed or those ankles stay flexed and down and back up. Again, if you're someone where you hyperextend, try not to go all the way to full extension. Stop just before your knees are totally straight. All right, and then probably my favorite exercise, which I show in a lot of different videos to address a lot of different movement problems in the legs, is a step up. So choose a step height where you can be successful. Now again, what I want you to pay attention to or focus on is that the key to this is bringing your body weight forward as you straighten that knee. So a lot of times what people do is they'll straighten their knee out first, and then they'll kind of lunge themselves forward or pull their body weight forward or just right off the bat pull up on something, but you're really, you kind of aren't flexing the ankle as you're straightening the knee. So what I want you to think about is getting your foot over the step, getting your body over the step first, and then pushing down or trying to straight that knee out. Again, if you are someone that had your knee hyperextends, stop a little bit short of that full, full straight position. So about five, keep about five degree bend in, but again, you want to be moving your body weight forward as you're straightening that knee out because that's where you're going to get that combination of the ankle flexing as you're straightening that knee out. So again, up. And then that is it for this video. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Don't forget, there is a PDF handout that goes along with this video. So if you found these exercises helpful and you want access to that PDF handout, you do need to be a bronze or a gold monthly member. To learn more about our membership programs or to sign up, you can visit rehab-hq.com. If you're new to this channel, and you like these types of videos and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so that you will get notified every time I upload new videos. Also, if you're new to this channel, I do have a free PDF handout of exercises for you to work on your balance and your overall standing. Link for that is the second link in the description below. And again, that is a free gift to you if you are new to this channel and you wanna get started on improving your single leg standing balance. Click on that link to get instant access to that handout. If you wanna get exercises throughout the week, you can head on over to Instagram where I post one to two videos every single week just to help keep your home exercise routine fun and add a little bit of variety. So I look forward to seeing you guys over there. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.